Immediate CPR doubles, even triples, a person's chance of survival. And joining Mid Michigan Matters is Orlando Gregory with the Red Cross Mid Michigan chapter. In Orlando, how can bystander CPR greatly improve a person's chance of survival? Thank you for having me, Taylor. Uh, bystander CPR increases it significantly because there's over 350,000 cardiac arrests that happens outside the hospital, and that increases the survival rate to 10 to 20 percent if we can get bystanders to do something way before EMS show up because they're the first responders before the first responders show up. So trying to get them to do something is absolutely essential. We could either do full CPR, which Red Cross teaches, or either just compression only CPR, which is pretty much what the, we teach the citizens before yeah. they come to the class. So that's what is vitally important because of the cardiac arrest situation that goes on. And the, and the vital important of CPR is the first three minutes. The first three minutes of cardiac arrest is vitally important for CPR. So you want to take that immediate action and you want to know what to be able to do as a bystander. You may freak out a little bit, but this person needs to be saved. So when it comes to bystander CPR, mm -hmm. what do they need to know in terms of chest compressions? Right, what they need to know is the center of the chest and try to at least push at a depth of two inches. And that will be just compressions only. But when we do the full CPR, that's the 30 compressions and the two breaths. 30 compressions and two breaths. That's what Red Cross teaches as it relates to a lot of the different skill sets with Red Cross and CPR. So we would do 30 compressions and in real time we would theoretically be on the floor. Right. Because we would be on the okay, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, 13, 14, And the pacing of the chest compressions. 16, absolutely. The pacing is absolutely essential. What we call the rate. We're trying to do the rate of 100 to 120 a minute mm. and that will create a, you have to create a pace to get that. And usually one of the songs that people know a lot from Red Cross is Stand Alive, which yes. will be the proper pace to get the 30 and two compression. 30 compressions, two breaths. 30 compressions, two breaths is considered a cycle of CPR. So and that's just for the adults and doing the 30 compressions, the two breaths. And mm -hmm. again, if you're a bystander, you just want to focus on those compressions chest compressions. Only until EMS show up, which gives a person a chance of survival, which is 20 to 30% chance of survival if you start immediately within that first three minutes. And that time is ticking. And is so ticking. not only is it for the adults, but it's different and it's changed, you mm -hmm, said, for mm -hmm. even the infants. So when we move mm -hmm. here real quickly, mm -hmm. how do we do this? When we go to infants, we're doing uh, what they call the encircling thumb technique. It's still 30 and two if it's just you by yourself. Okay. If me and you both was working on that infant, it would switch to 15 and two. Okay. But it's 30, you're still doing 30 compressions, but a depth of an inch and a half versus a depth of two inches here. Okay. So you're doing an inch and a half depth, two inches here, and you're still doing the two breaths also. All right. Okay. Well, that is great information, Orlando. Mm -hmm. You broke this down so simply where mm -hmm. I feel like within those few minutes, you would know what to do. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Appreciate of course. you being here. Of thank course. You. Thank, thank you. Thank, this thank great life-saving yeah. measures and redcross.org on the bottom of your screen can help you further your life-saving skills. Well, you got a lot of people heading out for the warmth. So, Justin, as people head outside, what can they expect? Well, expect good conditions today. Unfortunately, we have a continuation.